In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for saying, yes, I'm going to keep Sunday holy, especially in this time of Easter. And it is Divine Mercy Sunday. Every Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday because God is rich in mercy and He pours that out to us. In fact, we remember that at the start of every Mass. Some of you are doing that novena um, and we will go to confession, receive communion, pray for the Pope and his intentions, and have all your time in purgatory wiped away or have the clock restarted. Let's ask God for His mercy that He generally gives us. Let's do that right now. Lord Jesus, we are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the sender of the Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, the to the Lord, Lord for, for he, he is, is good. good. His, his love, love is, is everlasting. everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, for he is good. His, his love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good. good. His, his love is everlasting. everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, Lord, for he, he is, is good. His, His love is everlasting. everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, to put my finger into the nail marks, to put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Love, forgiveness, and Gatorade. Although Gatorade is not a sponsor of our Mass, um, if they wanted to make a donation uh, to our church, we'd be happy to have their donation. Um, we don't want to really be like Mike. We want to be like St. Michael. And we say the St. Michael prayer here after daily Mass, not after the Sunday Mass. But love, forgiveness, and Gatorade on Divine Mercy Sunday. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday, everyone. So, love. Love. Do people say funny things? Yes or no? Say yes. Yes. People say the funniest things, they do crazy things, and you just have to love them anyway. I remember once upon a time, I come back to my, this is before I was a priest, I come back to my apartment and my girlfriend is there. We didn't live together or anything like that. But she's in the kitchen and she's got, I don't even know, 12, 7 um, of those like little plastic uh, net boxes of grape tomatoes. And she's got them all out in this tiny little kitchen and she's like crushing them. And I'm like, you know, and you should know that she was blonde for what it's worth. And I'm like, oh, you know, what are you doing? Uh, you making sauce or something like that? Making gravy? And she says, no, no, I'm not. I said, well, what are you doing with all these, with all these little tomatoes? And she goes, I'm making wine. <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're making wine with grape tomatoes? And she says, yes, it'll be red. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, man. Like, probably not the brightest you know, tool in the, in the utensil in the drawer, you know, I mean, she probably wasn't that bright if she's going to date a guy who's thinking about becoming a priest, <laughs> right? Like, so there's that. But you, and what, what was my response? Love her anyway. Did she make one? No. There was no wine made from grape tomatoes. <laughs> Maybe you've tried that. It does not work, right? Anyway, you just love them anyway. And you may have crazy people in your family, people that our conspiracy theorist people, people that believe the earth is flat, people that hate this politician, people that love this politician, people that believe you should own a knife that cuts through a shoe, people that have the slap chop, right? Like people that want to get off grid, people that want to be more plugged in, autonomous cars, you know what, love them anyway. Whatever. That's great. They have their opinions on things. You have yours. Your position in mind is just to love them, even if they say crazy things. Like think of the apostles, right? Three times Jesus tells the apostles, What's going to happen to him three times maybe more but we at least hear three in the scripture and he says look guys here's what's going to happen um i'm going to get tackled they're going to sack me I'm, we're going to go down i'm going to fumble the ball right and then when that happens right the apostles are like shocked right literally what does jesus say three times look i'm going to be betrayed i'm going to be cursed i'm going to, like, people are going to spit on me they're going to crucify me and after three days i'm going to rise you apostle like, oh, okay, we're, we're, we're not sure what that means. And then or one time Peter's like, no, nah, Lord, that shouldn't happen to you. Right, three times. But they're going to kill me. They're going to crucify me. After three days, I'm going to rise. Right. 
Three times. And then Jesus rises from the dead. And what are the apostles like? Yo, yo, he rose from the dead. <laughs> Jesus probably like, seriously, I told you guys three times that was going to happen. Well, like in the East Coast here, for many of us in New Jersey, many people here watching the Northeast, right, we just had an earthquake. Right? And what was everyone doing out here? They're calling everybody. Hey, did you feel the earthquake? Did you feel the earthquake? Where were you? And people have this story. Where were you when the earthquake? I haven't been to Alaska for 15 years. i uh, been going up there in the summers. We have lots of little earthquakes up there. Where, I'm, where I go, there's not really major earthquakes. But I remember the first one I was in, and everything started shaking in the rectory. Like, you know, when you overfill your, your washing machine, and bump, 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 and everything just, like, starts shaking. Everything was jumping. I'm like, oh, what would I do? I stood in the door frame. I was like, standing in the door frame, saying Hail Mary, thinking, this is it. I'm on the second floor of a tiny church rectory, thinking, like, all right, if this building collapses, I'd rather surf it down than, than like, be on the ground floor. That's not what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to actually crawl under a table and hold on to the table leg in case something collapses on you. I'm standing in the door frame saying, Hail Mary, thinking this is the end. Right? And it was not the end. I remember walking on the road after that, like looking at the damage, communications were down, like trying to figure out like what happened in this little town. And thinking like you're walking on the blacktop going, this, this ain't stable. Like you think this is stable, this whole thing can move. Right? It was like, ah, crazy. We had our little earthquake out here in the northeast, four point whatever. To me, it felt like a two when it came around. Everyone has a story. And what I want you to see is Everyone's in the Northeast, in Jersey at least, everyone wanted to immediately call their family and say, hey, did you feel that? Where were you when the earthquake? Here's where I was. And they wanted to tell that story, right? And other people are like, y'all crazy. There was no earthquake. And that's kind of what's happening in today's gospel, right? Today's gospel, the apostles were like, hey, I saw Jesus. You see Jesus? Where were you when I saw Jesus? Where were you when you saw Jesus? I was on the road with my friend and he appeared to us. Mary Magdalene was like, yo, I was right outside of two. He appeared to me. St. Peter, he appeared to me. And they're all telling, St. Paul tells, he appeared to 500 brothers at once. Jesus appearing to everybody. What is St. Thomas going? Man, there ain't no earthquake. I ain't going to believe. There was no earthquake. You're all crazy. Everyone's saying there's a, there was an earthquake. There ain't no earthquake. I ain't going to believe it until a fault opens up right in front of me and I hear ACDC singing, shook me all night long. And then he's walking home and she was a fast machine, she kept him. And like suddenly the earthquakes and same, you know, um, Thomas is like, ah, there's an earthquake. Like Jesus appears in his side. And he's like, put your hand in my side, right? Hee hee. Put your hand and put your finger in my hands. And then he believes. Right? And Jesus, when he appeared to him, right? He knew that Thomas was saying all kinds of crazy things. And it's not that crazy, because no one had ever risen from the dead before. Jesus had risen people, but no one themselves had risen. Jesus does that to show his mastery over death, that he is God, right? So it wasn't crazy that he said that, because no one had done that before. But Jesus hears what he said. And what is Jesus' response? He loves them. He just loves them. Right? And the apostles, what does he do? He just loves them. And love, forgiveness, and Gatorade, what I want you to see is, I guess, well, one, every, as everyone here in Jersey had to tell everybody about the, the uh, earthquake, maybe you had earthquakes, maybe you don't, maybe it sounds like a crazy story to you, like the resurrection, right, but when it happens out your place, well, you'll have to tell people. We have a lady in our parish named Renee from Chile, when she was eight years old, the earthquake, like, ravished her town, like, demolished her town, and so she's like, man, this ain't no earthquake, you guys don't know what an earthquake is. Right, like an old Italian lady saying, you're putting ketchup on noodles, that ain't spaghetti of meatballs. Like, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not pasta or macaroni. All right. But like they had to tell everybody, the apostles had to tell people that they saw Jesus, because that's crazy. I was thinking last week, I didn't use it in the Easter homily, we had the Bugville story, and thanks for many of your nice comments on that story. Maybe, we, you know what, maybe we'll find a good illustrator, maybe we'll make it a children's book or something. I don't know anything about that. Um, I was thinking about using this last week and I didn't in the homily, right? Like you had a terrible experience of the bridge, you know, and the boat that hit the bridge in, in Baltimore, right? And then imagine you have like a bunch of people who are saying, hey, I walked over the bridge. And people are like, what are you talking about? Man, you didn't walk over no bridge. The bridge crashed into the, saw, into the sea. We saw it crash. We saw the video. It was terrific. It was like terribly, terribly, terribly horrific. And they said, well, I, I saw the bridge. I walked over the bridge. You're crazy. And then, like, you have 500 people. We walked over the bridge. That would sound nuts. And that's because they saw Jesus, and they got to tell people. Just like, I got to tell someone where I was when the earthquake, and tell me where you were. All right, so they see the Lord. And he shows up, and he just loves them. And that's huge. Because if you and I 
were the apostles. We followed a man for three years, and we believed in him as a teacher. We thought he was the Messiah. We saw him do miracles. We saw him calm the oceans. We saw him walk on water. We saw him give someone who was blind sight back. We saw him give lepers healing. We saw him cast out demons. We saw him forgive sins. We saw him, you know, raise the dead. If we saw him do all these powerful things, and then it came his moment of trial, and we abandoned him and betrayed him and lied and said we didn't know him and ran from him. If we did all that, and he comes back, you might expect that we might be fearful that he's going to say, now you're going to get it. Right, I'm ticked off and you're all going to get it because you all followed me. You said you did and you didn't do it. Right? We, might be, we might be ashamed of what we did or failed to do in standing by him. Right? We might be like scared to see him. We may want to avoid him. And we're going to feel certainly really guilty. And Jesus comes back and what is his words? His words are, Peace be with you. He's saying, look, we're all good. Don't worry about any of that. We're really good. And he says it three times. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. He's trying to say, look, don't worry about him. We, we can't get over it. Like with the apostles, they're thinking that, oh man, he's got to be angry with us. We let him down. Not just let him down. We heard him. We didn't stand by him. And he was, Jesus is like, peace be with you. He just shows up and he loves. And he shows up and he forgives. And he breathes on them. And, and like we're used to hearing this phrase, but like how many people breathe on you? Right? Like as a priest, sometimes you got people that are close talkers and they have bad breath. And it's like a Seinfeld episode and they're leaning into you and they're telling you something. And their breath is awful and you're like, oh, I try to like smell my mustache or smell my hand. Sometimes in the hospital, people, it's not their fault. They have gingivitis or something. And they're trying to tell you their sins or something like that as a priest. And I'm trying to like smell my hand or put like, you know, cologne or beard oil or something on, on my, you know, mustache. And, you know, it's not often you get breathed on. Jesus breathes on them. He gives him the Holy Spirit and, breathe, you know, the Holy Spirit, that phrase breathed on, like the Holy Spirit, breath of God, the Jews would have thought of creation. God's Spirit comes on the water, he makes a new creation and he makes the apostles new. He gives them the power to forgive sins. So we just got to love people. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, we just got to love them. And if people hurt you, well, then we got to forgive them. All right, well, you know that you expect me to say that. But Father Dave, sometimes it's hard to forgive people. Sometimes they're doing more than making, trying to make wine from, from grape tomatoes. Sometimes people are doing some terrible things, especially when family lets us down, right? We expect more from family. Family has the ability to hurt us, or we have the ability to hurt more from family stuff. So like, what do you do when they hurt you? Some of you know, I, you know, I do the bless them, change me. Sometimes that helps, sometimes that doesn't help. What do you do? Gatorade. Gator aid. Aid to Gators. Gatorade, what do you mean Gatorade, Father Dave? So, when you come to confession, are you forgiven? Yes or no? Say yes. Yeah, you're forgiven like this. Jesus gives the apostles the power to forgive sins. That's what he's doing in this, in this gospel, right? Uh, sins you forgive are forgiven. Receive the Holy Spirit. This is the first thing he's doing in the resurrection. Real important to God. Receive the Holy Spirit. Who sins you forgive are forgiven. Who sins you retain are retained. Right? Real important to God. One, I always say as kids, like, if you're a child, you may tell your parents, I don't want to take that cough medicine. Who knows what medicine you need more than you? Your parents or you as a little kid? Your parents should know, right? And so for us to say, God, I don't need your confession, is to like slap his hand. I don't need what you're offering me. The first thing he does in the resurrection, receive the Holy Spirit who sins you forgive. He wants to forgive us. He just comes with love and forgiveness, and he turns the apostles into people who can forgive others. All right. So what happens when we need to forgive others? Gatorade. Gatorade. Yeah, you come to confession and you're forgiven like this. Just like that. And I think people think that because we're forgiven like this in confession, the priest, I, the priest just says, I absolve you from your sins, right? That didn't count for you. You got to come to confession and you're forgiven. And the priest, we ain't going to yell at you. We know that when you get online for confession, that you feel, and I feel, just like these apostles, you feel a little shamed, you feel a little scared, you feel a little like, oh, I'd really rather not be there. I hope I don't get yelled at. And as priests, we ain't going to yell at you because we know what it feels like because we have to go to confession too. And as a little secret, I'll let you know on a secret, if we don't forgive you, we're not going to be forgiven. And there's some exceptions to what Jesus says, whose sins are retained or retained. Uh, only twice have I ever not forgiven someone in confession. Only twice in, in my 15 years of being a priest. Once, uh, once was someone who was drunk in the confessional and were not, they were completely 
not sober. And so they didn't really know what they were doing. And so if you don't know what you're doing, you don't have like your mental capacities about you, I can't forgive you because you're not sober. Right? One time. The other time I didn't forgive someone in confession was a lady. I think I may have told you this before. She came in to confession and she had no sins. She told me she didn't have any sins. And I went through like all the lists. And as a priest, like they tell us in, in a seminary, it's like going fishing. You got to find at least one sin. They got to be something they're sorry for. So you go through the Ten Commandments, right? She kept all the commandments, what she told me. You go through the deadly sins. She didn't do any of the deadly sins. I'm like, have you been impatient? No, I'm a very patient person, Father Dave. I'm like, what about when you drive? Oh, I'm a good driver. I'm like, I got nothing. I'm like, God bless you, lady. I can't forgive you. You did nothing wrong. Right? Only twice. Right? So there's some, some conditions by which, as a priest, we can't give forgiveness. But they're super rare. We want to forgive you. It's our job, you know, in a sense, like in a marathon, to hand you, you know, God's forgiveness. Like to pour it out on you. All right. But what about when we want to forgive others? Let's get back to the Gatorade. When you and I come to confession, we're forgiven like that. And you and I can have the mistake to think that although we're forgiven like this, forgiving others is something like, like just like that too. It's that easy. And it's not. If I want a Gatorade, right, I can just get a Gatorade. And I know Buzz Jerry out there saying, Father Dave shouldn't drink Gatorade. There's too much sugar in it. Well, we're using Gatorade today, right? If you get this Gatorade, you just you know, pay whatever, two bucks, 270, whatever it is at Wawa or whatever store you got, Exxon, you're going to gas station, get Gatorade. Right? You just buy it and drink it. Recycle the bottle. Just like that. How long did it take this Gatorade to get made? What was needed to make this Gatorade? Right, I can't see, I need glasses now, I can't see the ingredients, right? I know there's water and sugar and probably, you know, flame retardant, and all kinds of stuff in here, right? But you had to, they had to make the plastic, they had to get the printer to make the dye uh, on the wrapper, right? They had to like, you know, get whatever food dyes are in this thing. They had to bottle it up. I had to get on a truck, had to be shipped somewhere. Right? There was a whole process that went into making this Gatorade that you and I can just buy and get like that. And why am I bringing that up is when you, when you struggle, when I struggle with trying to forgive someone, when we just gotta love them, and so sometimes we gotta love people when they do wrong, even though wrong to us or do wrong to our family or kids, all the people that we love, we gotta forgive them. And that's hard. And it's not as easy as just saying, I forgive you. We gotta remember the, like, the, it took a process to get that Gatorade, and it took a process for God to forgive you and me. We just came through it in Holy Week. What did it cost God to forgive us our sins? What did it cost? It cost the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of his only begotten son, that Jesus came, born in a stable, laid in a manger, right, an animal trough, grew up for 30 years being treated as just a normal person, normal human being, and then, you know, betrayed, spat upon, bled out, died, rose three days later, ascends into heaven. Right? Like, all of that is what it took to forgive you and me. So forgiving is not like a, a quick thing at times. It starts by you and me saying, I forgive you to the person who hurt us. Or if you don't talk to them, right, because they're not in your reality maybe, then say, God, forgive them for what they did to me. Don't hold their sin against me, against them. I'm not going to, although I really want to. Right? It starts like that. And then you say, God, now I need you to help me forgive them. Right, God? You, like you say to someone, like you write them a check, right? And a, you, a check says, I, a check's value is forgiveness. And you say to someone, look, I forgive you. Right? And that's hard. And then in the back of your mind, you're going, I don't really forgive you. But like it starts by saying, I forgive you. And then you go in your room, you close the door, you talk to God and be like, God, I just told him I forgive him. Now I need you to back that up. I need you to give me what I need to forgive them and not to take that back, to continue to forgive them. Right? Bless them, change me is a prayer that helps with that. The divine mercy chaplet, that's something I do for my enemies, for people that have hurt my family, for the people that have hurt my church, my parish, for people that have done us wrong. But it's harder for me to forgive people that hurt my family than it is for people who hurt me. Right? I, I'm like, my bro one of my brother's people would beat him up. And so what I would do is I would beat the people who beat up my brother. Like, if you mess with my brother, I will find you and I will harm you. Right? That's, that's how I grew up as a kid. I used martial arts to protect my brothers. Right? So it's hard for me when someone hurts someone I love. So what do I do? Right? What do I do? 
I like to joke. I get Jimmy, Vizepi, and Joe, you know, Joseph. I get their baseball bats. We go find them. We beat them up, and I give them forgiveness. <laughs> right? No. That's what I want. I take my collar off. We go to war. Right? No. What I do, I pray the Divine Mercy Chapel. I do it every Thursday for my enemies. For the people that hurt me or the ones I love. Right? So forgiveness is not super easy like that. It is from us to God because we just get the product that he's offering. And he's offering because he's rich in forgiveness. And it took him a process to forgive us. The, the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of his only begotten son. And he holds us out to us like I do for you in like a race. It's like, here's a Gatorade for you. And God is holding out us to us forgiveness. He's coming back to the apostles. Peace be with you. And he wants us to take what he's offering because he's rich in mercy. And that's like if you're rich in anything, hold it out to help others, right? If you have, if you're rich in humor, man, then it'll make other people laugh. If you're rich in beauty, then beautify other people's life. If you're a good organizer, then help organize other people who need help or in organization, right? Like if you have, you know, if you have money, what did the church do that first reading? People who had money, this isn't communism. They're not giving the money to the state. They're giving the money to the church. And what is the church doing? The church is giving it right back. Right? The church is, we're not here to get rich. We're here to help other people. Sometimes people do that with us, right? People say, here, Father Dave, here's some money to help someone I need. People give me money, comes in, and then I give it to this person who needs it over there, right? It's, it's actually pretty cool. The Vincent the Paul Society, many of our churches, many of your parishes have that, right? Like if you're rich in mathematic skills or you're good at doing taxes, well, then can you do someone else's taxes and help them? There's a lot of people who are struggling with TurboTax. They're like, I ain't got TurboTax. I have a two-cylinder, you know, jalopy tax, then help someone else out, right? If you're a good sewer, maybe there's something you can sew. You're a good cook, cook for someone. What God is really good at is forgiving. And when you and I want his forgiveness, he's right there offering it to us, and he's willing to help you and me forgive others. Part of that is when you receive it from him, then you get better at giving that out to others. Like we heard last week in that story, on bouncing the light of Christ from the resurrection to other people. So, you just got to love people. You just got to forgive them. It's not like that. It's not easy. It comes, well, from the richness of God. So the next time you're struggling and you see someone who did you wrong, your family wrong, right? Go to God. Say, Lord, I forgive them. I'm not going to hold their sins against me against them. Help me to not take that back. Help me to forgive them all the way through. And you may have to pray that every day, but keep it up. And you'll be like St. Michael. And you'll get that forgiveness. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's raise our prayers to Almighty God.
that the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may look favorably upon and provide the resources for the needs of individuals and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven and see the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the end to coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, especially the Holy Land, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. And now for those petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We also pray for the petitions that people uh, sometimes list down below in the comments. May God hear those prayers, especially those who are sick and have been sick for a long time. May God hear them and heal them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. For we ask them on this day of your divine, divine mercy through Christ our Lord. that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept the Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time of Easter, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostle, St. Martha, St. Faustina, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other this sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. We want to say thank you to everybody who uh, prayed for us at over Easter and certainly participated in our Mass. Thank you for your very kind comments. Uh, hopefully I have a little time this week to go back to those Easter comments and reply. I try to reply to you guys as best I can. Sometimes the weeks allow me to do it more than less. I don't know. Did you guys do that? I know I did not yet. Diane. I didn't have a lot of time either, but I will. So thank you for everybody who does that. That gives us encouragement and your, your super kind words. Um, Go to confession, right? You heard that homily? Do it. Don't be afraid. Go and then live free, right? And then take up with that other piece, share with others, right? Um, we had a bunch of storms here. Of course, you know, some strange weather has been going around. This is not a cons I'm not conspiracy theory or weather, whatever. Bad, this is a lead up to a joke, but bad weather. So poor Jess lost power. She didn't have any power. And so she couldn't get her phone online. And so Diane told her what Diane does when Diane can't get online. And what is that? Diane goes to the DMV, the driver of motor vehicles. So whenever you go to the motor vehicles, you're always online. <laughs> Hopefully that's not true if you're not in New Jersey. But that's what we want here. God bless you all. Pass on the faith, as you heard was said. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.